Yes, sir. So uh, I would just like to ask one basic question. Uh, uh, do you guys know what a palindrome is? Like it's a very basic question. That you yes, sir. Uh, any kind of programming. Right? It's the so same thing. Uh, like Malayalam, it, both ways written, it comes out to be the same thing. Uh, so hello. hello. Right. Uh, I'm not able to actually what you said. So it's like both way, if you write the same word both ways from left to right or right to left, the thing comes out to be the same, like Malayalam. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Okay, so that is what a basic uh, palindrome is. So sometimes also in biology we face with a, we face we are faced with some palindromic sequences as well, which is like if it if it's read from both left to right, it's the same thing. So now there are two. Uh, I just want to uh, like briefly introduce how you can do a palindrome as well. So there will be two uh, inbuilt function of Python that you have to understand. So the very first thing is, let's say we define any um, uh, string, let's say like whatever India, and then uh, there is a inbuilt function of Python which is called as a case fold. Now what this case fold does is. Uh, yesterday we studied about dot upper and dot lower uh, inbuilt function of Python. So dot upper basically does what it does is it converts every smaller case letter into an uh, uppercase letter, and dot uh, sorry uh, dot upper does from smaller to upper, and dot lower does from upper to lower. What dot case fold is? Dot case fold is a very similar. Uh, it's very similar to that of dot lower function, right? So let's say if you have any mixed uh, uh, string, let's say you write D as capital here, let's say. And let's say you write I S A S capital A, whatever it is. So what this dot case fold does is it first takes this particular string and it makes every letter into it converts every letter into the lower case letter. That is what basically dot case fold does. So instead of using dot case fold, you can also use dot lower as well. There's not, not an issue. It's totally up to you. Okay. So that is what a basic dot case fold and dot lower is. Next thing, uh, what uh, it is that. So to con uh, to uh, see whether a particular sequence is a palindrome or whether a particular string is a palindrome or not, what you have to create is you have to create two strings. So let's say we have created a single string A, saying it which stores India. Okay. Now we have to create another string that will store the reverse of India, and then we can compare whether these two strings are uh, equal or not. That is the basic logic that uh, we can do behind a palindrome thing. Is this clear? The logic behind what how a palindrome thing can be uh, like uh, compared together. Yes, sir. Okay. So what we can do is we can define another variable b, and there's an inbuilt function of Python called as reversed. Right? You can just write uh, reversed, and then in the argument, just write whatever string you want to be reversed. So I, let's say I write a. So what this b will store? B will store the reverse of India, right? And then you can give your condition, saying that if uh, your list of um, a. Now, why we are writing list? Basically, we are writing list because uh, what happens is whenever you do a comparative analysis between two strings, it doesn't actually take the string whole together. What basically it does is while comparing it uh, individual, like it breaks down or slice open your string into individual elements and stores those element in the list, and then it compares each and individual element, saying that uh, the first element of the list A whether it is equal to first element of list B or not. So you are comparing each element and that's how you can say that, okay, if this number is equal or if these words are equal, then it's palindrome, otherwise it is not. So what you can do is you can write if list A equals to equals to list B, uh, just print, let's say P for palindrome and else print not a palindrome. Okay, just run it. And you see uh, the output is NP, that is not a palindrome, basically, right? So uh, what it does is there is uh, it first converts, so dot case fold basically first converts everything into a smaller case letter. And then you store up one particular, and similar thing can be used in a DNA sequence as well. So you uh, store your uh, main DNA sequence in a one particular variable. You do the reverse of that particular variable. Uh, and then you compare both of the strings together and see whether they are same or not. So if it's same, then it's a palindrome, otherwise it's not a palindrome. So this is clear with everyone. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, another thing uh, that we can do uh, uh, with uh, or play around with the DNA sequences is basically uh, using a concatenate function. 
that means you can add two of the strings together so you have uh, one particular let's say at gca and then you have another string uh, let's say gca whatever it is and then you can just uh, like print both of these together let's say a plus b and you can concatenate both of the strings together and that is what uh, in the output that you will get is the addition of both of the strings together so this is the same thing that you can carry out in uh, bio python as well so because it is happening for both the strings only so it's not a difference whether you do it in python or do it in bio python the command will be the same in both cases okay now let's see uh, how you can uh, like add or use loops to concatenate two strings together so the very first uh, thing that we will be doing here is first okay now everybody has bio python installed in your pycharm right like you have then whatever the basic requirement is yes sir okay so the first thing that we will doing is importing uh, bio python so what we'll do is we'll write from bio dot sq that is sequence we'll be importing our sequence okay now sir, the next thing is uh, let's say we uh, yeah um, sir, uh, while uh, uh, just uh, checking if the sequence is palindrome or not, so if we write mm -hmm. the first sequence in order, and if we mm -hmm. take the second string uh, in its complementary form, so will it be? I mean, will the output be palindrome or not palindrome? No. No. Uh, so uh, what you can do is, uh, if you do it in like, uh, if you do like a transcription function, you are seeing right that you have taken uh, one particular DNA. You have trans like basically do a complementary thing, right? So obviously yeah. the complementary DNA sequences are always palindromic, right? Because whether you but the thing is, what happens? But what happens is that uh, if you are uh, like uh, like comparing the elements together. So what was happening in previous case was, let's say we created India, okay? And then what happened was in our first string A, the zeroth element was I, and then the first element was N in the similar way, okay? And when we reversed uh, the string together, then the zeroth element in the next string, that is the B uh, list, the zeroth element become, became A, right? And then it compared your, the zeroth element of first string is compared to the last element of the second string. And that's how you can see whether there's a palindrome or not. Right. So if the similar kind of case happens in your complementary sequences, for example, let's say you have ATGC and then for that complementary sequence, you have written your, uh, for this particular main DNA sequence, you have written a complementary sequence also, right, and stored it uh, in the particular list. So the comparative analysis that Python does is basically it compares your first zeroth element of the first string to the last element of your second string. And then it will say whether uh, when once it is read from your uh, right to left, or once it is read from uh, left to right, well, both the readings are same or not, okay? So what happens is uh, once you give a complementary DDA sequence, then it also al always depends upon how you are basically defining your string, okay? So like how your next string or the reverse string is storing a value. That uh, On that, it will depend whether your uh, the DNA sequence is going to be palindromic or not. But sir, if we take ATGC, Mm -hmm. And uh, the complementary mm -hmm. will be uh, TACG, right? So mm -hmm. from the first string, from the first string, it will. Let's say we have ATCC, okay? And then what we do is, uh, let's say we do it in the same way. That is a case fold. And then we do a reverse function here. That is reversed a and then saying that if list uh, a is equal to equal to sir it's not b, visible yes sir it is, it is. Then it, uh, the screen is not visible sir right now it is earlier it was not visible okay 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 okay, okay. then we can write just this one uh, as yeah, so let's say print and let's see what happens. So what what does it gives you? Not palindrome. It's not palindrome because we have reversed it here, right? Now uh, we but we don't want a reverse function, right? What we want is a complementary of this one. So let's say your complementary will be uh, T A C G, okay? And then you compare it together and let's say if this is equal or not. Now it says not palindrome. Why? Because 
because A and G are not equal. Not equal, right? Yes. Okay. So you get the logic how the palindrome thing works out. Like, what is the connection? How does it actually compares to a list? Okay. Yes. Okay. That is the basic logic behind how a palindrome works. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, go to the bio pattern thing. So what we can do is we can just uh, do from bio dot check import uh, sequence. And then uh, let's say we define a particular list of sequences. Let's say we have a list called as A, and in that list we have defined let's say three sequences. Let's say A T G C, and then another one let's say G C A T whatever it is, and then let's say another one we take uh, C C G A whatever it is, right? And then now uh, what I want is I want my program to give me an output whereby these three uh, codes are like these three DNA sequences are combined together. Right. So what I can do is first I will be creating a blank, uh, let's say, list type of thing or a blank uh, variable, which initially which doesn't have any value. Okay. So what I can write is let's say I write a blank variable as B, and I don't give anything to it. That means it's blank right now. It doesn't store anything. Now what I can do is I can use my uh, for loop to try and concatenate all of these things together. So what I can do is I can just write let's say. Uh, for S, basically, S stands for sequence in this case. So for S in A, and uh, I will just write B uh, plus equals to S. That means individually, it will be taking the strings from this particular list A, and then it will be adding it in the B that we have defined here. So it was blank initially, and then it will be adding whatever string that it is like exploring or from this particular string. So it will do this, and then you can just uh, print your concatenated string. Let's say we write print B, and then you can run it, and it will give you the concatenated print, like uh, the uh, DNA sequences. That is addition of all those things together. So what basically happens? So this can be done without even importing this thing, okay? But just to keep this thing in mind, from now onwards we will be uh, like uh, keeping this thing as constant from now onwards because now we are studying about BioPython, so this will be common in every programming language. Okay, so but this can this particular program can be done without the import of the sequence of BioPython. So what basically happens here is that you have created a, a list which consists of DNA sequences, and then you have created an empty uh, list where which is basically a concatenated list, but initially it will be empty, and then you are using a for loop saying that for every sequence in the list A, uh, once it extracts this particular sequence, just update the value of your concatenated uh, string uh, sequence. And then just give me the output as B, whatever the con uh, concatenated sequence is, and it gives you the output as this much. So is it clear with everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now sometimes what happens here is let's say uh, I have a list uh, which consists of these three sequences, but let's say I want to add something between these sequences. What between these sequences I mean is not in between here, but between these two sequences. So in previous example, uh, what we saw here was um, all the three sequences were written as it is like continuously. But I don't want that. What I want is after the first uh, sequence has been written, there should be something in between, and then the second sequence will be written out, and then there will be something in between, and then the third sequence will be written out. So how should we do that? So what uh, we can do is let's say I create a variable termed as uh, space. Okay, uh, saying that um, this is my basic name. Whatever you can do anything. And let's say I want to introduce a um, Keshav. Can you please make me the host again? I'm facing a bit of network issue right now. Thanks, man. Okay. So what happens is sometimes in a DNA sequence, what you can see is there are uh, instead of ATGC or AUGC, uh, there are certain numbers where sequences which are represented by n, like a large uh, length of n and n repeatedly, right? So that is uh, sometimes you can see in any kind of your transcribed DNA. Or sometimes also in your mRNA sequences, right? So let's say we want to uh, introduce this n in between these three sequences, and let's say what I want is I want these n to be uh, repeated ten times. Let's say I write it in this way: that is, I want my n to be repeated ten times, and these should be included here. 
So now what I can do is I will just write print whatever my sequence is. So I will write that whatever sequence that I get should be uh, inter uh, like interfered with this particular thing. So first what I'll write is first I'll write uh, my variable in which this particular thing is stored and I'll use the dot join function that we used in the general string format. And then I can write where I want to join my space variable. I want to join it in my sequence that is A. And then you can just uh, print it and see in between every uh, sequence you have this 10 times N is repeated. Term. The ADGC and then, and then GCAT and then CG, CCGA, whatever it is, right? So you can use a dot join basic function. And so first you have to define your variable. That is the variable that you want to introduce in between your sequences. And then just use dot join. And in the uh, argument of dot join, just write in which particular string you want to uh, introduce your uh, spacer function or your whatever variable that you want to get. So is this clear with everyone? Yes, so, so uh, if I want to introduce only between ATGC and GCAT. Only between ATGC and GCAT, yeah. So for that, we have a different kind of function there. So in that, this won't happen. So in that case, what you want to do is you have to define another string whereby you will be just storing this spacer function. And then what you will do is you have to individually assign Python saying that don't introduce this spacer function after element number two, uh, sorry, after element number one of string A, right? So what it will does is it will incorporate or it will cut off your sequence from here. It will splice your sequence from here and will just give you an output saying uh, 10 times n between this thing followed by your uh, CCGA. After GCA, it will be followed by CCGA, right? So okay. we will be looking at that thing. Uh, like I just uh, after two three programs, we'll be seeing that thing as well, uh, whereby you have to use it's something called as uh, like two stop function. So that is something that we will be using, uh, which is also written as something like as two underscore stop. So this is a basic function which will actually stop your uh, sequences at a particular point of time after which you don't want anything to repeat after itself. So you can use this particular function as well. So I will be showing you how to use this as well. So now uh, once your basics are really clear about uh, how you can introduce something in your code, uh, like uh, DNA sequences or whatever it is, the next thing and the very basic thing in um, DNA or molecular biology is your uh, transcription and translation process. Okay. So uh, can anyone tell me uh, what this particular process is called, whereby your uh, DNA is converted into mRNA, then mRNA is converted into proteins and your sometimes uh, mRNA. When mm -hmm. DNA is converted to mRNA, it is called transcription. And when the mm -hmm. mRNA codes for the protein, it is called translation. And what the, uh, what, uh, sometimes your mRNA can go back to your DNA, that process? Reverse transcription. Reverse transcription. And the whole process? Central dogma. Central dogma.